Okay, so our third video for Unit 2, and it's the last video of Unit 2, is on all the other people. We've talked about, uh, you know, the people in Mesopotamia with the Sumerians, and we've talked about Egyptians uh, in the Nile River Valley. So now we're going to talk about some of the other groups, some of the groups who control trade and, uh, you know, have some innovative things in terms of religion. There are two big ideas that you should probably get from this unit. Uh, this part of the unit, and that is that the Phoenicians were creating an alphabet that was based on sounds and only had 22 symbols. Now think about that. All the other writing methods that we've talked about up till now had thousands of symbols. So you had to have scribes to read them. Well, this one is going to be 22 letters. Anybody can remember that, even me. Well, most of the time. And then the other big idea is that Judaism is going to create the idea of monotheism, a belief in one God. So remember, those are the big ideas you want to pull from this, but there will be lots of other content in the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, this is the last video for Unit 2, and we're going to be talking about the other groups of the... Here's the SOL, of course, where we're, you know, trying to show you about how the religions and the societies were set up for most of the, the River Valley civilizations. And, of course, we've been focusing on the Middle East and the area known as the Fertile Crescent in this unit. And uh, again, the big ideas that I wanted you to get out of this unit are the idea that the Phoenicians are going to create an alphabet that's based on sounds and uh, not pictograms, and then the idea that the, that the Hebrews or the Jews are going to create a monotheistic religion uh, based on personal behavior and ethics instead of based on gods of nature. So those are the big things that we're going to focus on in this unit. Okay, so one of the first groups of people that we're going to talk about are groups of people that traded in the Fertile Crescent region. And because they were so good at trading, they had a big impact on the area. The first group are the Arameans, and they controlled overland trade between Egypt and Mesopotamia. They so dominated trade in this region that their uh, language becomes dominant. It's called Aramaic. And many portions of the Bible will, uh, were written in Aramaic, because it dominated the, the, the area that fully. The other group of people are called the Ladeans. Now, most people up at this time, when they would trade, would barter. In other words, they would trade other goods and services for other goods and services. But the Ladeans changed things because they introduced coin money. And remember, if you're going to have money, you also have to have uh, something else, and that's prices. So the Ladeans established a money system for their trade, usually based on precious metals like gold or silver. Now the other group of people that we're going to talk about and the different groups that fall into that category are the conquerors of the Middle East. The first group of conquerors are called the Hittites. Uh, they were a polytheistic group who came in and conquered throughout the Middle East. And the main, the main reason that they're so significant is they're the first group to use iron weapons. Now, the Assyrians are one of my favorite groups of people because they are known for being the cruelest conquerors of the Middle East. Uh, some uh, historians believe they're the first to impale their victims. They sold many off into, into slavery, and they would often destroy the entire civilization that they conquered. The third group are called the Chaldeans. And they are significant mainly because of one of their major rulers. Now, they're the group that captured the Jews and take them back into captivity in Babylon. But the Chaldeans are most famous because of a famous ruler named Nebuchadnezzar. And he is the leader who had the Hanging Gardens of Babylon built. Now... Nebuchadnezzar had the gardens built for one of his favorite wives because she was homesick. And so he sent men out to her homeland and brought back animals and plants from that region and had this elaborate garden built with water pumps and everything else. But this also brings us to our first point of bad poetry with Mr. Burner. 
So here's a poem to help you remember all about the Hanging Gardens. Are you ready for it? Nebuchadnezzar was a geezer, had a wife and couldn't please her. So he built her the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Poetic genius, I know. But it will help you remember. Please make sure you repeat it. Again, Nebuchadnezzar was a geezer, had a wife, couldn't please her. So he built her the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. The last group are the Persians, and they were known for being tolerant conquerors. We're not going to discuss them too much because they play a much bigger role in the next unit. Now, that brings us up to one of our really important groups for this region, and those are the Phoenicians. Now, the neighbors of the Phoenicians called them the Philistines. Uh, the Greeks called them Palestinians and called their homestand, homeland Palestine. So yeah, they're the Palestinians, the people that we talk about. Now, they settled all along the Mediterranean coast somewhere around 3000 BC. We know that probably what they're most famous for outside of their great invention of the alphabet was that they traded by sea. They had colonies all throughout the Mediterranean. And they traded many different things, which uh, we label as commodities or goods that have value. Glass, cedar, precious metals, and of course my favorite, royal purple cloth. Now, the cool thing is where they made the dye and what they got it from. They took snail guts and squeezed them into a bucket to make the dye to create royal purple. Now, I don't think it was any different than any other purple, but somebody did a great sales job because all the wealthy people wanted the royal purple cloth. This brings us to probably the most important invention of the Phoenicians, and Sesame Street's really glad they did it. They created an alphabet based on sounds. The Phoenician alphabet had 22 symbols and each represented a sound. Now there were no vowels in the Phoenician alphabet. Those were added later. They had an extra consonant too. But think about it. You went from having thousands of symbols to just 20. Could do it. So they used the alphabet to keep track of their trades. And the 22 characters, like we said, were representative of sounds. And this is going to lead to the Greek alphabet, and then the Latin alphabet, and eventually our own. We, today, have 26 letters that evolved from this alphabet. And remember, you didn't need scribes anymore, because you could remember the symbols yourself. And so if you didn't need scribes, you know what that means. Unemployed scribes. It wasn't good to be a scribe after the Phoenician alphabet. Okay, so on your notes, at this time, it would be a great time to fill out the section about evaluating why the Phoenician alphabet would have an impact on the ancient job market. It's right here on your notes. Uh, I would suggest you pause the video and try to answer that question. Next up, we're going to be talking about the Hebrews. Well, I lied to you. We're really going to talk about Nubia. It's a kingdom located on the uh, upper Nile. And remember, just like the Shenandoah River, the Nile flies, flows north. So the upper Nile was actually the southern part of the Nile River Valley. Right here. Egypt to the north. Nubia down here to the south. Now, they did some really cool stuff. They introduced the bow and arrow. And they conquered many of the neighboring kingdoms. And they had a lot of inventions that we thought the Egyptians came up with first, but now we know it was actually the Nubians. Things like monarchy, boats, eating utensils. We might still be eating spaghetti with our hands if it wasn't for the Nubians. Oh wait, I still do that. Well, that's beside the point. Now, many of these things were passed on to the Egyptians, including the idea of pyramids. Wow, pretty cool. Although this is a little miniature one. The last group that we have to talk about in this is probably one of the most important. Remember that most of the people in this region were polytheistic, but there was another group called the Israelites, 
and they had settled in an area between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River Valley. They called this land Canaan. And here's the big difference. They were monotheistic. They believed in one powerful God that they called Yahweh. And their God expected them to know the difference between right and wrong, and to treat each other fairly, and to take uh, and accept moral responsibility for their own actions. Imagine that. But keep in mind, this is a big shift because the other religions up till now were polytheistic and based in nature. Now, here's the big factor. Judaism is a heavy, heavy influence on both Christianity and Islam, especially the part about monotheism. And don't forget that Christianity is based in Judaism. No way. Yah. Way. There you go. She's a babe. Oh, moving on. <laughs> okay, so now in your notes down here at the bottom. Explain why you think the Hebrew religion was so important. Analyze the information that you've got and come up with a reason. Probably a great time to pause the video. Okay, so here are some of the key people and ideas of Judaism. Abraham is the founder of Judaism. He was out in a field when the angel Gabriel appeared before him and told him to move to Canaan and he will make a great nation. So in the Bible, the Old Testament, also known as the Torah, which we'll talk more about in a minute, Abraham is considered the founder of the religion. Another key figure is Moses. Moses is the leader who leads the Jews out of exile in Egypt where they were enslaved by the Egyptian pharaohs. On their way out, he's given the Ten Commandments by God, which are the rules that they live by. And then finally, you have the king, one of the most famous kings, King David of the Jews. He's the guy that defeated the giant Goliath. Now, Jerusalem is the capital city of the Jewish world. And the Ten Commandments, as we pointed out, were the rules of Judaism. Unless, of course, you believe there were 15, like in the video from History of the World that's on your uh, links. I think you should check it out. It's really funny. Ten Commandments. You know, stuff like thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not steal. That type of stuff. And then the Torah are the written records and beliefs. Remember that the Torah make up the first five books of the Old Testament. And then there's the idea of diaspora. After the Jews got free from Egypt, then they were captured by the Chaldeans and taken to Babylon. When they were finally freed again by the Persians, they went to all parts of the world. They didn't necessarily go back to their homeland, and that's the idea of diaspora. But here's the key point that I want you to get out of this. Remember that because the Jews had this cycle of slavery, exile, and return, the Jews are very aware of their history. And also remember that they're the first religion to believe that they were created in God's image. And not only that, it wasn't like the gods just did whatever they wanted to. The Jews believed they worked in a partnership with their God or had a covenant, an agreement with their God. That is a big difference between their religion and the others that we've talked about up till now. Okay, so in your notes, here's the last section that you need to f fill out. If anything else hasn't been filled out, then we will complete that in class with some of the activities we will do there. In this box, you should sort of compare and contrast the Jewish religion to that of the Sumerians and the Egyptians. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you later. Okay, so the big ideas for this video... All right, number one, the Phoenicians created a 
22-letter alphabet that was based on sounds. And number two, that the Jewish religion is monotheistic and based in ethics, not natural forces. Thanks for watching.